All right, so today I'm going to be making a tutorial on how to uh, import Dead by Daylight models in a Blender. So there's quite a few of these, but most of them have kind of fallen out of date with just newer versions of software, including Blender, since things like Blender have had huge updates, etc., that have broken some stuff, changed the methods on how to do it, all that. So what we're going to need today is, of course, you're going to need Blender preferably the latest version you're going to need a software called umodel which is how we're going to get stuff out of the game and then of course you're going to need the game itself downloaded and then you're going to need a couple add-ons the first one you definitely need is called psk and then psa import and then you're going to need a few skeletons and then you're going to need ue shader script although you might not need this one it's nice to have so Blender, you can find it blender.org. Just go through the steps to download it. Um, and then you, Model Viewer, um, let's see here. There should be a download if you scroll down a little bit. Uh, and then you can go through the instructions to get that. All right, and then you want to go to this page, GitHub page here. And then let's see. Uh, how do you download this one in specific again? Let's see. I think, do you just click that? What is this? Okay. Okay, yeah. You just click that, and then you right-click, save link as, and then you can uh, navigate to your Blender add-ons folder. Or I think there should be a zip, I think, if you go back here. Maybe? No. So you just put that in your add-ons folder, which, let's see here, where would that be located? Um, is that an app data? I think so. So, local disk. Da, 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 da. Get some users. And then app data. Stender local. I don't see Blender. Roaming. Blender Foundation. Blender. 3.0. Scripts. All right. Um, is it that one? It might be that folder. I think it's that folder. I think you just throw it in there, or maybe it's under here under program files. Yep, it's under program files. I think. So scripts, add-ons, and then you just throw the file in here. And then we will go in here. We will go to edit, preferences, add-ons, and then we have to maybe refresh and then look it up. So let's do, uh, let's do PSK. Yep, and it's right there. Oh, and then you will also probably need uh, the... PSK, PSA, Dead by Daylight fix animations for some characters because for some characters their their animations don't import properly and it'll completely mess up their face. So you will need that add-on. It's also from Anime Nyon if you just go and click on their profile here. And let's see here. Right here. Fix animations. Yeah. And then you'll need few skeletons which will uh which we have to do now ever since an update of blender broke a compatibility thing so for these ones you go down and click the newest zip file save link as and then you nav you uh you can just save it wherever and then you'll go back to blender edit preferences add-ons and then you'll click install up here and navigate your way to that and then you'll probably have to click the check mark here to enable it. So let's see here. Um, and then once you get all of these add-ons installed, we should be able to start here. So you're going to want to open U model. You're going to want to navigate to your Dead by Daylight folder here, which will be in Program Files. Um, let's see, where's Steam? Steam. Steam apps, whoops, common, dead by daylight, and then we can just 
go another layer, I guess. Or, yeah, maybe the layer above. And then override game detection for Unreal Engine 4. And let's see, this is the last day of this patch. So I'm going to click 4.25. But after 4.27, 2022, it's going to switch to 4.27. That's important. If you click the wrong version, this will not work. And then everything else is fine. Click OK. It'll load it, open it. We don't care about this file. We don't care about the engine file. We care about the game file. So you want to go down to characters. And then I'm going to choose a survivor. So it's going to be campers. And in the files, there are a lot of code names. So you're, you're going to have to learn them. Slashers is killers. And if we scroll down, you can see a lot more code names here. Um, if you join the Dead by Daylight uh, rendering community discord, they will have those pinned in a channel where you can look up all of them. So let's see. I think I'm going to do... Who do I... Um, who do I not have? I want to do Nia. So what I'm going to do here is right-click Nia, open folder content. It's going to load her, her content. And then we're going to want to uh, go up here, include meshes. And then to scroll through, you do page up and page down on your keyboard. So, okay. It has all of her meshes loaded with textures on them. So we're going to look for what we want. I just want to do Nia's base cosmetics. So let's see here. I think this is her base shirt. And then, yep, it says uh, Nia Carlson, NK underscore tor torso 01. So how Behavior kind of names their files is they'll do the like absolute, like say, like absolute, like clothless naked model will be like 00. And then their base outfit will sometimes be like 01. And then all their cosmetics after that will be some other number. Like her second cosmetic will all be 02. So let's see here. I want to keep scrolling. And then what I did to then you want to select this. And to select it or tag it, you press Control T and that'll save it. We want to like lock this. And then we'll scroll for the next cosmetic we want. So let's see, where is, is that part of her base cosmetic? Sometimes they're labeled 01, even though they're not part of her base cosmetic. So what we can do here is go to here and look up her base outfit here. What is her base outfit? So. I'm not seeing those cards on them, so that must be them misnaming something. But it does look like she has chains here on her base pants. So let's look for some chains if we see any. Let's go back here. Let's see. Um, This is not the right chains because it's 016. She probably has multiple. See, oh, her pants come with the chain on them. That's good. Legs 01. And I think that's the only accessory we have to look out for. So I don't think we have to tag any more accessories. So we're looking for her base hair, which will probably be labeled 00 or 01. Not 001, 01. So let's scroll around and find out. Yep, accessory 01. So let's see here. Let's look for her head. Glasses 01. She doesn't wear glasses in her base one. And we have her head here. And I think all of her cosmetics just use her base head. And then right here, up here, very important. You'll see that we scrolled to NKD skeleton ref. You want to tag that because that's important because that's her main skeleton. All right. And then I don't think we're missing anything. So I think we can go up to tools. Export current object, go here, and then I'm going to go to where I save all these. 
and then I want to make a new folder for Nia. And select folder. Everything's fine. <clears throat> I wouldn't recommend changing any of it. Okay. Exported it all. Now what you want to do is go back here because sometimes it doesn't export the animations. I don't know why. So I'm going to just make sure. You model, I don't think, will create any duplicates. So if you just click export folder content, it'll export it to the last folder you saved something to. Or it'll bring up this prompt again. So, okay. Perfect. We have everything we need from you model, as far as I know right now. So we can go to Blender. I'm just going to delete this cube here. Now on the sidebar here, we are going to see PSK PSA. All right. So, oh my. Why are you at the top here? I don't want you at the top. Drag you back down. So now that we have all these add-ons, um, we can go click all here. Click this all button because we want the mesh option ha is not working anymore ever since blender 3.0 because of a compatibility issue so instead what we want to do is import everything the mesh and the skeleton for each piece and this is good because this helps us with accessories for like say other characters so what we want to do is import psk let's find our way to where we save stuff uh let's see and then I saved it to Survivors. And then let's find a Nia. We're going to go to Game, Characters, Campers, Nia, Models. And we're going to import all the meshes. So Head Mesh, Imported. And then Shift Tab. Oh, come on. Shift Tilde, I mean. To do Fly Mode, at least how I have the hotkey set up. And I will kind of breeze through the controls, just assuming you have at least a basic knowledge of Blender controls, just very basic. I will bring up important ones though. So back to this, go into accessories, and then up through these folders to grab her hair and hat. Sometimes the hat will be separate, but usually not. Go back up. We're going to import legs, up, torso. And then we're going to want to just import the main skeleton back up, and it's going to always be here in this main folder for the models. All right, this looks like a mess right now. What we're going to do here is we're going to select everything here. And then I think you usually want to select the main skeleton last. So we're going to click this, hold shift, and then click all the way back up here. Select everything in that range. So now we want to click over here and go to Fuse Skeletons, select Skeleton, and then click the main skeleton. Bam. It's all one skeleton now. It's one main rig. So now we can just click all the meshes down here through the drop down, right click into this panel, shade smooth, so it doesn't look like polygons. Now what we want to do is we want to start shading stuff. All right, this is where things uh can get a bit confusing and has a huge mastery curve so i'm gonna start with something simple let's start with how about the shirt so okay i want to change my layout here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click this corner until i get across here i'm going to click drag up until i get that arrow here because i want to merge this bottom one with this top over this top one because I want to be able to see the whole screen. All right, and then I clicked the shading tab up here to get here, by the way. And then let's see, uh, I like keeping this bottom left one the same, but I like turning this top right tab, and then you click these drop downs to change what each panel does. And then I want this to be the 3D viewport. And then uh, to rotate around, I'm pressing the middle mouse button. So I'm going to go into fly mode and get it to where I want it to be so I can see the shirt texture as I work here. And I want to go up here, use nodes, drag this, these panels out here. These four buttons up here uh, are what you're seeing. So I want to click this third one, which is the checkered one. 
so I can see textures as I do it. Uh, viewport shading, uh, uh, rendered mode, you don't want to do that unless you want to see like a preview of your final result for a short amount of time. And then before I go on with shading, another important thing is you want to switch the render engine to cycles. And the cycles is the ray tracing engine. And then for later on, you want to switch to GPU compute if you have a pretty good GPU. Um, and if you don't, you want to stay on CPU. The rest we're going to just kind of leave alone for now until we get to that. So I'm going to switch back to this tab down here, which is the materials tab. So let's see. I clicked use nodes, and then this should appear right here. So what we're going to want to do is for quality, I switch this to multi-scatter. And then shift A. Whoops. My little thing went away. Hold on. Never mind. I want to screencast keys here. <laughs> You're not going to let me screencast keys? Wait, can we... Da, 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 da. Well then. Well shoot, I'll just have to say the keys as I'm going then. Anyways, so. You do Shift A. Don't touch anything, and then you just click that search bar, image, texture, click that, and you want to click open, or now you don't want to click open yet because you don't know what you're supposed to be grabbing it. So you want to go to your file explorer, find your uh, folder here, game, characters, campers. Nia materials and then let's see we're doing the shirt so that's probably going to be in outfit 01. So now we have several files here but what we're interested in is whatever this is whatever this is named up here and then we're looking for the dot props of that. So sometimes if this you can't find it in the materials folder what you can do is you can select all that copy Go back here, go back up to the game directory, search up here, paste, enter, bam. And then you want the props file because this will tell you everything you need. So I'm gonna navigate my way back for later. So, okay, this shows me everything I need. All right. So, nothing up here. What we mainly care about is texture parameter values. That's pretty much all we care about for quite a few things. So it seems like she has the three standards for uh, pretty much every texture. She has the base color file, which is just the color. She has what's called an ORM map, which stands for ambient occlusion, the roughness, and metallic. Ambient occlusion we won't use pretty much. And then normal maps are kind of just the cheaper way to put on put depth onto objects it's a smart but cheap way and it's cheap in a good way because it's faking depth you don't want to have that many polygons for actual depth or else i think all of our computers would just die anyways tangent over so we're gonna navigate our way to where it says each of these is located so it looks like these are all in the same one here, same folder. They're in the outfit 00 under the textures folder. So let's navigate our way there. All right. And then once we get to Mia here, what we can do is once we're here, we can right click and then add bookmark. Whoops, actually, no. You want to go under Nia so that it sets a noticeable bookmark name so you're not getting nothing but game folders here. So let's see, characters, campers, uh, Nia, textures, oh, oh, 
And then let's see, can I just drag these into here? Okay. Oh, I, wait. Torso 0001. Let's see, hold on. That looks like a weird naming convention thing, but anyways. So, uh, torso 0001. Uh, can I just drag this? No. But what you can do is you can go in here into your uh, file explorer here. If you don't want to manually do open image, navigate, open image, navigate, etc. If you don't want to keep doing that, navigate your way here, textures, oh, oh, close this, file explorer, drag this down, and then or so, oh, oh, click and drag, delete this, put this in here, do that again, ORM, and then normal. Okay, so we're going to organize these in the way that's most convenient. So the way that they're most convenient is base colors at the top here. ORM is going to be these couple of these middle ones, and normal is all the way down here. So Another important thing is you want to leave color space here on the base color pile as our sRGB. ORM is a non-color file. You don't care about the file. You just care about the information that's stored in that color, basically. That that color represents, basically. And then the same for the normal. And let's see. Say so you have like a, a black and white a black and white uh, image uh, map. That's going to be linear, so like an alpha map or transparency map, okay, or like a depth map. This is... Um, okay. So now what we're going to want to do is, for the base color, we can just directly hook this up to base color. Easy. ORM, we're going to need to shift A, search, separate RGB, because ORM maps are basically storing information in those, not HSV, whoopsie, in these three uh, color channels. The red is the ambient, green is the roughness, blue is the metallic. Okay, connect this, click and drag, green, roughness, blue, metallic. Cool. And now normal maps are a bit more complicated. So let's see. We want another separate, control V, and control C, control V that. I'm going to move this out to make space here. Connect. Now, because uh, normal maps are different for applications that use OpenGL and DirectX. So I think Dead by Daylight uses DirectX. Maybe. So we want to invert the green channel here. This might be Dead by Daylight specific two though i'm not sure which it is but for it to look completely right we want to invert the green channel and then reconnect everything here do a little organizing so you don't go insane and then we want to hook that up to a normal map node and then we can just leave the rest alone hook that up Okay, all right, we've got skin here. Now what we want to do is just kind of, let's see. Uh, everything should be fine. We just want to turn down specular so she doesn't look shiny. Because that's not how skin quite looks. All right, so now we want to click slot. Oh, meshes with multiple uh, things going on with them will usually have more than one material going on so what we can do here is so I'm gonna select these pieces the everything that's not like the actual image I'm gonna copy to go here use nodes delete control V okay we have the basis for what we need I'm gonna go back here we can open the dot props file again but I know what I need because I've done this a bit so we're gonna go to 01 so this is torso 01 all right torso 01 uh, BC or M 
Men, um. Oh, whoops. Sorry, I'm going to connect to the normal map. Do not forget to change the color spaces. It will look terrible if you don't remember to change these to what they're supposed to be. It will look terrible. And in the left bo bottom left panel here, you can even see the colors changing. That's important. It changes how Blender processes the information from the image. So let's see, um, specular, it's probably even lower than skin. All right, so we got a nice thing going on here. All right, so I'll put a timestamp somewhere in the description. If you wanted to skip ahead here, I'm just gonna quickly do the same for everything here. Da, 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 da. Our pants is going to be about one. Oh, oh, uh, she's got a face texture for her legs and skin here. So remember to do that. Legs a one BC or M. And the reason I'm not checking the ops file so confidently is because I know that pretty much every material will have these three textures. And, um, let's see. Although I probably should check it real quick here because it could have an alpha mask here for these rips. So let me go look at that. I should go look at that. So let's see. And then I want to look up. Each legs are one, and nope, it does not. It just has those three. Non-color, non-color. Everything else alone, and then I can do that for here. Legs below. Whoops, I'm in materials, not textures. Legs, 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 legs. Non color, non color. All right, and then turn the specular back up just a little bit. All right, and then uh, I'm moving into layout mode just to kind of get a bigger picture here. All right, so I need to do her head. So scroll wheel to zoom out, get her head, use nodes. All right, the material is the, just the head. So I'll drag those in. Normal or M. All right, on color. Turn the specular up. The face is probably going to be a little bit more shiny than the rest of the skin. Whoops. Yeah, control S. Remember to save your stuff. Remember to save it often in case it crashes and back it up somehow. Okay. Lashes. That's an interesting one. Okay. So let's see here. Lashes. Um. So the inter interesting thing about lashes is if you... Um, Survivor models will usually just use the same texture for every every lash. Um, or if they don't, it usually won't matter because lashes are kind of the same color. So basically, what you can do is to reuse this uh, material is if you, say, delete 
uh, say you're uh, rendering multiple characters. Okay. You delete the other character and then add in the new one. Although very important, very important. Before you do that, I mean, not before you do that, after you do that, you need to go up here and then you need to click this Blender file, uh, images, and then you need to do, uh, not images. They're already orphaned. So if they're orphaned, you would go here and click purge. That would, so that makes it so these extra image files and stuff aren't being saved to your hard drive or RAM or something and taking that up. All right, switch back to uh, scene or view viewer. That's what I'm on. All right, go back to shading. So let's see. Um, this one's going to have an alpha file. This isn't the way I do lashes, but for the sake of the video. And then the materials for lashes are usually going to be in like the common ACC folder, something like that. Quite a few stuff. Quite a few stuff will be in that folder. This is why you need to check the props files. Because behavior reuses stuff from multiple characters, so it gets put in that folder. All right, so let's scroll down to texture parameter values. Yep. All right. Depth mask we do not care about because depth masks are kind of hard to use and make it look right in Blender. So let's see. The diffuse equals files black dot black. So basically that's just a fancy way of behavior putting in the color black. So for base color, throw, throw black in there, just a complete black color. All right, so now we want to uh, look up the alpha mask. That's going to be under common, uh, textures, top, ceiling lashes. All right, so game, characters, tempers, common, textures, and then uh, it's not the hair one, it's the lashes one. So drag it in. It's going to be linear because it's an alpha file and it's black and white. So let's see, alpha, plug it into that. What else do we need? So the root tip mask, okay. That's interesting here. So the root tip mask is uh, usually going to differ. They're going to be in different places, but this one in particular is just a standard gradient up and down. So what we're going to do here is navigate our way up to that main game folder here. It's going to be under effects, textures, and vertical gradient. That's going to be linear. So how we're going to hook this up is a bit special. So this is our, this basically is saying, okay, how much should we blend this one color with the other at what position? So now we are going to want to scroll down to vector parameter values to see which colors is, which colors they're trying to mix with the base color. All right. So we're going to want a ramp, color ramp. We're going to click this first square here. We're going to go and just grab the root colors here for RGB. Switch over to RGB. Paste that. Go here. Copy. And then let's see what color we end up with. Yeah, it's going to be just shades of gray, probably, because I think they just reuse lashes for each character. Click this square. Right. Yeah, it's just a lighter and darker gray. So what we want to do here is... We're going to take RGB here, put it down to black, and we're going to take, oh, let's see here, a texture coordinate node, and a mapping node, and I think we do generated, 
or UV, one of them. UV object for that. So we change this to texture. And then let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. I think. Do we plug it into this? I think so. And then I think we plug this into factor. So let me check here. Whoops, let me use the scroll wheel to slow down the camera movement speed here. So if I zoom in, I can kind of see what's going on here. So let's see. All right, that's not being very helpful. So what I can do here is I can copy these and then put these on a larger portion of material. So torso 01, that's the shirt, got it. And then to preview stuff like this, like maps and stuff, you can just drag the color all the way to the surface here. All right, so let's see if this is working. All right, so what I can also do is turn this back to black and white to see it better, because those are two very similar shades of gray. Actually keep both of these hooked in. All right. So it is indeed working. It does indeed work like we want it to. So I can just go delete these, plug this BSDF output back into surface. Oh, whoops, I don't want to do that yet. All right, so this works. So what we're going to want to do here is actually wait a second. I have this hooked up to the wrong one. So what we want to do actually is separate X, Y, Z. And then, actually, no, we don't. We oh goodness. Okay, hold on. I'm getting ahead of myself. Mix RGB. So let's see. We want. Uh, let's say this one at the top. This one at the bottom. This gets hooked up to base color. And then, all right. Now that I'm seeing these. All right, so let me logic this out here. So I want a vector hooked up to this. And then, yeah, I should just be, no, no, I want something. Actually, no, I don't hook anything up to factor here because what I actually do is I go and read the prox file. So I hook that up, the factor, and this will tell it where it's supposed to be where it's supposed to be placing the color based on where it is on the mesh or UV map or something. So basically how Blender works is each pixel uh, works backwards to figure out what color it's supposed to be based on the lighting. So based on that, it'll look at this, go through here, kind of figure out, okay, I'm from this spot on the mesh. I'm going to map it. I'm going to place this uh, texture on that spot and then based on that spot I'm gonna make it some color from this range throw it in here and then I go into this props file go up and then what I'm looking for is diffuse tint mix so actually I didn't need to do anything because the diffuse tint mix is zero so that's actually just completely black I think yeah I have these hooked up the opposite way, I think. So zero, hook these up the other way, organize. Base color, done. Specular, I'm gonna leave it at that because eyelashes are kind of shiny. They are a bit rough though, so I'm gonna turn that up. I don't think they have an ORM. 
alpha, depth, diffuse, root tip mask, yep, everything should be good, leave metallic there. And then now what we want to do is we want to click this materials tab again, scroll down, viewport display, alpha hashed, alpha hashed. And then I'll just make it so when we're looking in the viewport here and it's just not rendered that we can actually see that it has transparency on those parts. Cool. Now we're going to move up to the hat. Make this quick here. Um, I'm going to go to here. Steal this stuff again. And then we're going to go grab it just really quickly. I spent a lot of time on this i'm sure if you're walking along you're getting bored um just skip ahead here i'll have the timestamp in the description promise um da, 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 output one accessory pc orm base color Change these to non-color. Okay, cool. Let's switch to the hair. And this is also not the way I'll do hair, and we'll see why here in a minute. All right, so where would hair be located? Hair, you're probably always going to need to look up the props file because they will almost never be in just the textures folder you'll have to find them in one of the common folders usually it's hair they reuse for pretty much everyone hair will have quite a few things you need all right so let's go into all right yep and then it's Nia uses Zarina's Ukraine is Zarina hair file so Nia, game, characters, campers, Ukraine, textures, outfit OO, hair. What else do I need? No, start closing these. All right, and then the alpha is, I don't know if that's the depth mask. We don't use the depth mask. Alpha is under common accessories textures and then it's the CMM hair 03A. All right, alpha. Right, VC. And then we have the normal. These do not have an ORM map. Uh, Normal, normal, okay. It's under that same folder and it's going to be 03N. Oh, and remember to change these color spaces. Oh, linear, not non color. Linear. And then hair. Okay, hold on. Before I do that, do this for the hair. All right, so hair is usually a bit shinier. Oh, let's see. If you need a recommendation on where to start, if you scroll up to here, it will usually have some values. 70.709. 7 8 for roughness. Usually these are like a guide. I don't need this. It doesn't have an alarm map. These are usually just recommendations on where to start because usually you'll be eyeballing these out because how Unreal handles these values is probably way different. All right, so now that root tip mask comes in again. So what we want to do now is I'm going to go back here and grab the setup from the eyelashes. Oh, whoops. Select it ahead again. I'm just gonna grab this setup here. Go back to our hair. Move this up. Mix. All right. 
plug this in, start. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Ah. Uh, I put this in the wrong material. This was our hat. Oopsie. Mix. All right. Now let's see. Let's go down here. Find what uh, colors they mix with it. Her roots are zero. Zero, zero so completely black. Her tip color is pretty dark shade of something. Let's find out here. Probably some sort of red. Oh, kind of like a purplish color. Anyways, so let's see. Um, now usually we want to switch this to not mix. Otherwise, you might end up with something funky, but for now, we'll just leave it as that and start eyeballing it out. So, in the props folder, it says we should put it at like two thirds. Okay. Now we can just, I'll leave it at mix and then, oh, whoops, wait a minute. Oh, that's not too, okay, that's a very slight tint mix, gotcha. Not two-thirds. All right, I think that looks good. We got everything textured here. We have everything textured, so before we move on, I want to make sure all of our materials look good, so I'm going to go up here, switch from object to world. Now, I'm not going to use point lights and all of that because... They just don't look that good by themselves. It, they look way more realistic and way better if you use this thing called an HDRI. And to use that, you're going to do an environment texture. And then you're going to want to have one downloaded. Like I get mine from either online or I get them from that one Discord server. So I'm going to go and grab that. I'm going to use just this studio one. And I'm going to plug that into color. And then if I want to mess around with it, I can do texture coordinate, mapping, and then leave the type as point and generate it, I'll plug it into that. And then I can just leave that alone because I think how bright it is is perfect. Switch back to this for later. I'm gonna so I can see her face better. I'm gonna turn up turn the hide and viewport thing on on the skeleton. And then I can click rendered preview. So it's going to show me how she looks here. Okay. So I can move around. It's going to be take a minute for it to load. Now let's see. Okay. I notice a problem. The problem with her hair already. Her hair doesn't look right. We can try to fix that with higher specular, although it won't fix it. So let's just turn up specular to like a hundred. All right, it still doesn't look right. I can turn roughness all the way down some. It's looking better, it's looking better. But it doesn't look quite right. All right, that's looking better. Still not what we want it to be. Now, let's look at her shirt. Looks pretty good. Arms pretty good. Pants pretty good, I think. Shoes decent. All right, so now that we have everything like that, I'm going to start importing an animation. So I'm going to click this. I'm going to go back to PSK PSA. Import PSA. You're going to want to navigate your way there gonna want to go to the animation file which is under characters oh, whoops campers Nia and oh oh gosh uh, animation and then uh, I kind of want to do her menu item all right her animation looks like it imported fine if it really messed up her face I would scroll all the way down here and then fix all survival facial animations it's her face. Now, let's see here. 
everything look nice. I'm going to hide it again. I can go in here, take a look. And for the sake of people that just want to do that simply, I will go find the camera. I want to delete that light. I don't care about it. If I wanted to do more custom lighting, which usually I do, I would mess with that. Let's find that camera. Where is the camera? All the way over there. So I'm going to do is delete that because I don't want to deal with trying to move that and rotate that. Shift A, camera. All right, so I can do G and then Z to lock it to the Z axis. Oops, it looks like I have snap on. If that's blue, turn that off. Don't want that. G, Y axis. And now because I don't want to be so willy nilly with the rotation, I'm going to go to this orange box here. And let's see, uh, this one, this one. I want to keep this one right now at 90 degrees. This Y one I want at zero. And then this one I can just kind of do whatever with. Let's see, 90 degrees? No. Zero degrees. I'm just going to do it face, just facing directly at her, which mind you, you don't ever want to do when doing any sort of photography, but for the sake of the video, I won't go for that. So let's see. I want to have the camera clicked and then go down to the screen thing. We're doing portraits, I think 85 or 84 millimeters is what you want for the focal length. And then that's all we change here. And then I got want this to kind of be more like a portrait. So I'm going to switch these numbers around 1080. No, wait. 1920, the X is 1080. So it's more like a portrait. I can see that it's not going to fit her entire head, so I want to move this up more. All right, and then I can click the numpad zero to switch to camera view and click it again to get out. So, okay, she's not centered. I kind of want her centered, right? Whoops. I don't want to use that while I'm in the camera view. So I can go here and make micro adjustments. So I need to move her along the x-axis about a snap. And then, um, I think she's still a little bit, and then, okay, it looks like the snap isn't going to work. I want to do half of that. Um, maybe a little bit more, say, 7.5. All right. Um, let's see. And then if you really wanted to be a photography person, you could, like, say, oh, I'll put her eyes at three floors or something like you're doing like a background or something so let's see how does this look all right looks okay she looks plasticky and like a model which it's gonna happen because principled bsdf is not meant for like realistic human textures so okay I'll get to that later for people that want to hear that. But for now, we're going to go to render settings. So right now, viewport, whatever you want it to be. Okay. And for the render samples, you're going to want to click noise threshold because this is the recommended workflow they use. Do not use this denoise option. This denoise option is pretty bad. Don't use that. We'll get to what you should use in a second. So keep minimum at zero. So it lets it automatically calculate it. Max samples is kind of how much quality you want over how much speed it you want it to go. And that kind of depends on your computer and everything. So let's do this as kind of recommended or like the recommended workflow would be like setting this to like some insane number, not caring about it, and then setting this instead. So I think point two three would probably be like a good middle ground for like people with like uh, differing computers. It's like say you have more of a low end computer, this is probably the value you want more. 
So let's see. Anything else I need to change? Let's go here. We already changed this. Uh, if you want your images to look a little bit better, you can save them with 16-bit depth. Although applications might not support that and they might compress that back to 8-bit. You'll have to see what application you're uploading it on or website or whatever. And then let's see. Where we render, we can go to UAE shaders. And then we want to go all the way down here, open this, and then use that 3.0 denoising setup. This is like the best denoising setup because all of these passes in this layer, how Blender calculates stuff, it's denoising each of these separately. All right. So now I think we have everything we need. We can go up here and render, render image. And now, oh, I can already tell you I did something wrong. I forgot something. It's not supposed to render everything at once. What I forgot to go over was all the other options we can do. So let's see, advanced. We don't want to pretty much change anything about that. Light paths. Um, something like this is fine. Um, just for basic rendering like this. I like to have these just a little bit higher just in case. But for this, uh, you definitely want to have transparent bounces up for the hair. So you want to be on the safer side and probably say like 30. Um, and then just for that same reason, you might want to increase the diffusing glossy bounces a little bit and maybe this a little bit. And then clamping, care about quality, turn that to zero to turn it all the way off. Caustics, turn those off because we don't use these unless you want like more realistic, like uh, transparent material rendering. Volumes, we aren't using volumes. We don't care about simplifying. Exposure, um, if it's too dark or something, you can do that. Transparent, this is how you make the background like transparent in the final render if there's nothing there, but it doesn't matter to me. Now, let's see. Here, where it says use tiling, you want to like know your computer for this. You don't want to render it all at once. So I know I think my GPU handles 512 tile sizes the best. And then you can turn this on if you're using, uh, if you have hair, and then you can turn it off and on to see what works better for you. You can turn on persistent data, although I don't know if that makes much of a difference or not. And then color management. If you're not going to do any post-processing in any other application, you can use medium high contrast. I think that looks the best. And then leave everything else the same, and now we should be ready to go. And then because everything, all the settings are pretty low on this, it should just take just a second here. Oh, whoops. I can already tell you I had some setting wrong because there's this sliver here. Should not do that. I don't think. There shouldn't be a sliver here if you put your proportions for the tile and image size correctly. So let's see. It usually takes a bit longer to load hair. So, okay. All right. Do note, though, that the viewport and render will look different because the viewport simplifies the settings by a lot. So the render will always look better. All right. She looks pretty good. All right. So that is basically how you do just a basic render. Although, if you want to pose them a bit, you'll unhide the skeleton, click it, go to animation here. Uh, let's see, I don't want this panel to be so big. I don't want this preview panel to be so big. I can go to the camera here, middle click of the mouse button here. All right, so this is an intimidating mess but once you know what you're looking for it's not that intimidating like right now i can click on this 
go to this bone here. I don't need this because this bone doesn't do anything. Roll bones don't do anything on survivors. So I can click H to hide it. And then let's see if I want to just click A. And I kind of want to find a different frame in the lobby animation for her to be at. So say I want her to be looking off in the distance here and say, okay, now I want to pose her. All right, so I'm going to hide this too to simplify things down a little bit for me. Oh, whoops, why did it hide here then? Anyway, so, okay, that does something. All right, so it's very helpful if you just know how joints work in general on the human body to make these look less stiff, so I'm just going to Okay, that's, that one works. This is the roll bone. Hide it. All right, and then kind of what? And then knowing the view hotkeys, like one is front, three is one of the sides. Knowing these will help you pose them, but for the sake of this, I'm just going to do this as fast as possible. All right, so one of these is a roll bone. Think, yep, hide. All right. So, okay, I wanna, all right, make sure I move the clavicle here because that's how the human body works if you start to move your arm here. All right, so, shoulder, whoops, shoulder. I'm just trying to keep this very simple here. Simplify there. Oops, not G. Oops. Oh, shoot. Come on. Rotate with me. Keep it simple. Save the video. Okay, it looks like this arm might need to go down a little bit here. Let's start with the clavicle, because that will look more natural. Clavicle probably needs to go down a little bit. This arm probably needs to go down a little bit, which will mean this arm needs to go out. Part of the arm needs to go out. Find that bone. That bone's right here. Okay, and I need to readjust this arm accordingly. All right. Let's avoid clipping here. And then, because uh, I don't want to mess with her hands right now, that'll take too long. I'm just going to mess with her wrist down here. Uh, hand roll, don't want that. Where's the wrist? That's a hand roll. Here's the wrist. Okay, um, I gotta mess with this wrist too because it looks like it's clipping. All right. All right. So make sure you select at least all the bones you've done, or just or just a right click. Oh, let's see. Okay, yeah, insert keyframe. And then I just do whole character. Because we're just posing for a still um, render. Let's turn that back off. And I'm probably going to need to readjust my camera. Or you can readjust her model position. Uh, it looks like I kind of did a little messing up. Because uh, Dead by Daylight's weight paints can only do so much here so I want to move over and hopefully not look like that all right I'm gonna do make sure her eye is on the one third line because you usually want to put the eyes on like where like say if you cut this image into thirds where these cross where like the crosses are, the cross sections, like say there'd be a cross section like around here, but I don't want to put her head all the way down here because this is a render, so I'm going to just settle for putting it on, oh, say this third line here. 
So I need to move this camera a little bit further here. All right, so I need to fix her arm up here because I did that. So I'm just, I, I wouldn't, but I'm kind of trying to show you the workflow here. Let's see how I can fix this and see what part, what rotation is giving me trouble here. Which rotation change would fix this? You generally want to avoid changing the location of the bones though. So it looks like because of how I moved the clavicle, it wants to do a little bit of going this way and then a little bit of going inward. And then let's see. And then can I Yep. Let's see here. I'm going to just use this a little bit here. Trying to fix clipping. All right, so what I want to do here is move this clavicle up a little bit, actually, to look more realistic. And move this. Oh. And it's careful. This one a little bit down. Move this one up some more. Eh, down. It looks like she's tense. This one back down. I'm gonna move her head a little bit too. Is she more quizzical or is she more annoyed? I'm gonna do it where she looks a little bit more annoyed because if I move it the other way I'd have to mess with her hair bones here and I don't want to do that. So let's see do this. So that looks like it's up against her body now. So let's fix this arm. All right this shoulder probably needs to go down a little bit. And then this. Perfect. Insert more character. Let's turn the skeleton off and get a nice preview. All right, so. All right. I think I can just center here and not have to worry about third lines. But this looks like something that would go into another th another like thumbnail or something. Although, it does look a little weird now, so I'm going to move her just a little bit off the side. That's better. Alright, no, she's not clipping through the image or anything. Alright, and then I guess I should also do a little introduction of the facial bones here, because those are pretty intimidating. So. There are a lot of bones here that actually just don't do anything and you're going to want to probably slow down your camera a bit. Like, things that start with joint probably don't do anything, but just in case you want to like try to press G, move them around, see what that does. Like the joint head, joint neck, those do something. Those are the two that I know do something. So let's see. There's the eyes. I usually don't recommend rotating them with the R key and moving it around. I recommend just rotating them with this. Don't mess with W and uh, don't mess with, I don't think Z. Don't mess with those two. So yeah. So let's see, you can move her up, down. Say if I want her to look at the camera, I'm gonna move it a little that way and then I'm gonna copy it, find the other eye, eye right trigger. You're gonna probably have to click in the same place a couple times to find it over here. Just click around to find it. Copy. Her eyes are looking in the same direction. Okay, insert keyframe character. And then you can also find these eyebrow parts like that. This is eyebrow one. Let's see, um, and then I want her to look a little quizzical here, so I'm going to move this eyebrow up. Okay, I can hide that to simplify it and make this easier to look at. I can hide that. That doesn't do anything. That doesn't do anything. That's her eye. And then 
Uh, that one's a little too close to the edge. I don't want that. That's the eye. Uh, da, 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 and I move this down. For the eyebrows, you will be moving stuff around rather than rotating them usually, and with the mouth. But an important thing with the mouth here is remembering how anatomy works. You don't really want to be moving the lip. You want to be more rotating it, rotating it. And then for the bottom, you don't want to do like this. You don't want to move the to make it look like they're talking. You don't want to move their top lip up. You want to move their jaw down. Where's their jaw? That's fun. Sneer. Joint jaw. Okay, don't. That's not the right one. Joint facial group. I don't know. It's this one right here. So you open that. And you see that kind of dead by daylight models have weird mouth edges. So you can mess with that. And then you slightly move the lips accordingly. You can make it look like she's smirking here by just slightly moving up the lips. For example, okay, that's the tongue. All right, I already used that. Lips down. Move that up a little bit. And you don't have to know anatomy to do this stuff. It just helps you get to the result that you're looking for faster. All right, where is that? Tongue. Lips down. Lips up. There we go. I want to move that up a little bit. And then maybe go over to the next lip bone. Rotate it a bit. Because that's how. Because these kind of have like a relationship to each other. When one joint moves, another will probably move around it, you know? All right. All right, so let's see here. All right, so I need to go in and be a little less subtle about it because of how far away I am from how far the camera is away. So let's see here. Let's go back here. I'm gonna. Okay, the messing with the locations usually doesn't help much because of the weird way they're positioned and rotated on the face. So I want to be a little less subtle about this. Moved it up quite a bit. Okay, maybe a little bit more. Alright, that should be good. Wait, whoops, I need to save it or else it won't render it. Alright. Now there's kind of your basic posing. Let me take a look here in render mode, make sure it looks nice. I think that looks good enough. Render image. And then render out pretty quickly. Now notice that the skin still doesn't look right. It looks like plastic. That's because that's kind of what the principled shader does. It's kind of not meant for materials that have quite a bit of complexity to them. Like skin has this thing called subsurface scattering and all of that. All right, that looks pretty good. It's in the compositor here. It's using that denoising setup we had. Okay, it just finished. There's no noise. It looks pretty good here. Cool. And if that's all you wanted, you can just stop the video here. 
but I'm going to go a little bit further here and talk more about materials. So we really don't want to be using the principal trader for quite a lot of things. We want to use think shaders that describe the material better with what we're giving it and what we as people know these objects are. So let's see here. I'm going to start with our hair because hair is a big one. Never use the principle for hair ever, 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 ever. So delete this. And then let's see. I'm going to just go ahead, delete things I don't need here. I'm going to use a custom node setup that I made. So I need to go append that. It's right here. So here's what we do with that. I, in my experience, because I know this shader the best, and how it works, I'm able to get the best looking results with this. So root tip the gradient, root tip gradient, move this down, the alpha, and then I'm going to want colors from this here in a second, the normal. All right, so I want the colors from here. I know this is just black, and then I'm going to just copy this, and then I know this was like 0.06667. And then I'm going to go back here and re-look at those values again. Roughness, about this, her hair's a little shiny. Oh, well, whoops. Point seven. And then how shiny is it exactly? All right, it's pretty dang shiny, so I'm going to try to translate that into anisotric here. So I'm going to say like 0.2, because anisotric is kind of like a strong a strong material value, you know? All right. I'm going to go over here and see how it changed. That looks pretty good so far. Now, I can kind of mess around with where her roots are versus where her hair is. I think that in my shader I have stuff messed up here, so let me just uh, be lazy here. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta, minus one point zero six six seven. I'm oops, cracked. So let's see. Uh, what do I do? absolute value of that. I'm lazy. All right, so let's see here. Um, oh wait, I can just easily see real quick here. All right, one is brighter than the other. This one looks smoother, so I'm going to assume this is the roots and color. So let's see here. And then... Mia's hair kind of looks a bit red, so I want to use, go in here, tap into it. I want to go to the one that says value here, and I kind of want to do multiply, so I can see if I can get more of that red value. And it looks like, no, not really from that one. Um, so I'm going to kind of mess around with things here. And yeah, I think mix probably will look the best here. So let's see, diffuse tint mix. So it wants more of the diffuse, so yep, I want to do this. So her hair is probably more red than it is that purple and black. All right, and then I'm going to go redo all the textures with what shaders I currently use. So basically, I don't use this for clothing. I use the shaders that uh, Roman Noodles made here, because those are very flexible. Then I go to Node Tree, 
select all of them, append, and then those will be in the group. Clothing shader too. These are very flexible shaders that look really nice. You can do a lot with them and they're pretty complex shaders. They kind of describe the clothing pretty well. So I need to hook up everything here. I just need to hook up the images because the node group kind of does the rest for us. And there's no mask or BDE texture, so I just plug it in. All right, so. Sometimes Behavior uses metal ORMs to make their texture shiny, but it doesn't seem like they did that with this one. I'm just checking, so I can just move on here. This automatically sets this to one. You do not want that for pretty much any clothing. You set it to a pretty low value like this. Glossy, is, one is no glossy for some reason. Um, transparency is just if you have a mask. Uh, let's see, velvet, I usually just turn all the way up for clothing. Usually you might want to mess with it though. Uh, the rest can generally stay the same unless you kind of want to mess with each of them. And then I'm going to move on down. All right. I'm not going to worry about the lashes because lashes are tiny. For the head, this is where things get really complicated because faces are really complicated. All right. So I actually want to keep this. And I'm going to... Actually, hold on, I want to move this all the way over here. And then skin shader, then move this. Move these a little bit. All right, so this is where things are going to get a little bit more complex here. So I'm going to do a mix shader node. And then hopefully I have a file that kind of matches this. It kind of looks like Young Jin's lips, which, which I've already done. Lips kind of have a different subsurface going on with them. Lips are, uh, I don't, I think they're a bit thinner skin than the rest of the other parts. So let's see. So I'm going to go back up here and I think for Yunjin I have a lips file that looks similar. Textures, alpha, oh, lips, linear. I'm going to put that factor in. All right, so plug that in and then I kind of got to make sure I did it right. What looks shinier? Uh, mess around with one of these. Oh, it looks like I got them backwards. Okay, it's going to take a hot second. I set this down this low because look at that, how much subsurface skin has. All right, random walk fixed radius for the lips. All right. So we have everything hooked up there. Subsurface for skin is usually red or something. Um, uh, shoot, I don't think I have enough lips left. Here. Let me see here. Let's go back and forth here. That's not enough lip. All right, maybe I have another one. Well, hopefully I do anyway. If not, we will just have to roll with it. Uh oh, where did I save that to? All right. Um. Hmm. Might have to just roll with it. All right. Think we're just rolling with it. It's not gonna look the best, but yeah, it's gonna look pretty bad actually. But yeah, we'll have to roll with it. Okay, so 
usually I turn the saturation up just a little bit and the value down to compensate for how the skin shader interacts with the textures. Uh, let's see. Core strength, leave it alone, leave it alone. I turn ambient occlusion off. And then for specular, I do a little bit of a mask here. And then I can just preview that. We're doing that. I want to select the right range for what I want to be sh kind of shiny and kind of not. Yeah, I don't want the eyelash to have like any shine. Kind of want it to transition a little bit better and not be so harsh. All right, yep, that's kind of the things I don't want to be a shiny. Uh, I'm gonna move a bit up more so the eyebrows don't have shine. I can plug this into specular, replug this in. Okay, this should all be good down here. All right. And I want to change the subsurface to 015 here because it's thinner. All right, so that should be good for that. I need to, uh, I'm going to speed run my way through the rest of this. Or no, I just want to copy the skin shader. That's it. Corso 01, delete that. Delete. Delete. Speed run this. These shaders are really complex, so it takes Splendor a hot second to realize what's going on. I'm going to leave the specular alone because we're not paying that much attention to it. Or, well, maybe. Hold on, I'm just going to go back up here and grab the same color ramp and hopefully that works. Because she has patches of dirt on her skin that probably aren't the same. Oh, goodness. Aren't the same as her actual skin. Cool. Okay. Uh, go grab the clothing preset. Okay. Okay, Blender. Come on. All right. Trying to be as quick as possible here. No one wants to see this, and I don't have a video editor to fix that up with. If I did, this would be a lot easier. I'm gonna leave that alone. And it looks weird right now, but it will look better here in just a moment. And I'm not gonna bother with her legs, I'll leave those as principled. It's just a bad bit of skin that shows. No, nothing that no one will really notice for the sake of time. All right, these should all be hooked up and look nice. Uh, her pants do have metal on it, so I can kind of put some scratches on there, make it look a little bit more raw, decrease the brightness a little bit. All right, so can control this, control S that. And because subsurface scattering takes ages to really look right. It takes a long time to render, so I will not be rendering this out. Although, oops, not tiling. I want to go film, transparent. It'll help me distinguish how she looks here. All right, she does look a little weird, so I probably need to readjust my values for her skin. Skin value. Um, probably turn this up that much. Skin value, let's do 85. Let's go down to her torso and change it the same way. She just looks really pale right now. Alright, that's looking pretty good. And then you can go in, increase the quality by adding a subsurf, 
subdivision surface. And then you can up how many times it subdivides it in the viewport versus the render. I'm just going to do it once just to show how it looks. And voila! This, this is what you end up with. The hair looks really nice, the clothing looks really nice, the skin looks really nice, the lips are looking a bit realistic. Oh, and then another thing you can do is teach you how to remap things. Remap things to different materials. So these eyes, these aren't skin. These aren't skin. That's silly. So what I can do here is I can click this button, make a new material, name it eyes, and because of how UE shader works, I don't think I can grab the... Yeah, I don't think I can grab that yet. So what I'm going to do is just copy this and uh, throw it in here as a temporary storage. Click the head. Go to... UE shader. I'm going to scroll down to Pit Princess's eyes here. And then I need to go locate the folder that Nia's in. Only go to the game folder. And then I want, so it goes zero, from zero to whatever in here. So I want the head. So zero, that one. All right, that has the thing I'm looking for in it. I'm gonna copy and delete these. Throw these in. I don't know why Blender does that. Absolutely bizarre. Absolutely bizarre. Sometimes doesn't register that you click something if you move too fast. Delete these. It's very weird. Copy. Delete and put those back. Now, okay, that did nothing. That did nothing. But now we want to click her head. Tab. We want to make sure we have vertices selected. Click L. Select a vertice. I mean, click this and then click L on another vertice. Hover over it and click L. Shift. Press the other eye, and then click L again. We're going to head over here, click Eyes, Assign. Bam, they're assigned to a new material, and you can tap to go back. So now we're going to take a step here just to look at her face. All right, her face is looking pretty good. Could be a bit better. What it could do with is, oh, I haven't added one to her face yet. Let's add one. I've added one to her hair, yep. Her face looks less polygonal now. Nice. And then I could do something more with the eyebrows here, but I don't think I will. Her face looks really nice, really high definition. I can go in, mess with her hair a little bit. I don't think it's shiny enough. So I can turn down the roughness a bit more, actually. Turn up the Indie Soft Trick. And if I really wanted to make the, make the shine pop out, I can change the rotation of that shine a little bit. Oh, but now it's starting to look like metal because I'm overdoing it. Let's just turn it back down to two. Don't overdo it or it'll look like metal. We don't want that. And what I might actually do is turn this back up to what it's supposed to be. Since I added a rotation. Eh. I might I don't think hair should have rotation on it. I think that looks weird. I think I have too much anti-soptic on it. Should just have a little bit of shine. Anisoptic is like kind of like metallic effect if you get too much of it. Might need more roughness actually, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I noticed that high roughness values usually look a little bit better with this. 
Yeah, that looks pretty good. Got a little less roughness. So I think I can afford to turn that down a little bit. But yeah, I could be here for quite a while just adjusting that value, but you get the idea. There's a lot you can do to make hair look nice here. If I let it stranger out here a second, you'll see that everything has quite a bit of detail. There's a lot you can mess with with these nodes. You could spend hours making materials out of stuff. Here. That metal looks very nice. Her shoes look nice. All of that. Um see and then when you're done rendering i'm gonna go here you can do image save as and so on and then if you need any more help there's that discord community they're always answering questions there's a lot of resources etc and i recommend checking that out but for now i think that's all i have to offer and i think that is probably the most up-to-date guide that i can provide on this topic